uh, while we're getting everything set up, um, has anyone here made a Minecraft mod before? Just uh, shout it out if you can. Looks like a lot of you have. Awesome. Okay, hello, tomato person. That is a lot of you. Excellent. This is exactly my target demographic. Okay. Well... My name is Asikek. I've been a member of the Minecraft modding community for a year and a half. And I've released about a dozen mods under the modding team called Spade Team. Plus a few for ModFest. Today I'll be talking about a modding process that deals with neither code nor JSON files. I call it Playing Modding Minecraft. We'll go over how to repair your project before you begin, what you can do while you're modding, and finally the release. So, big question. How do you finish a Minecraft mod? First, I'll explain how you start a Minecraft mod. Well, you create a mod rinth draft. This is an optional, by the way. Ignoring this adds another hour to your Gradle set startup time. Monrith is the best mod, mod hosting platform right now, and drafts are one of its best features, from a development standpoint at least. Drafts let you plan out your project before you've done any work, and they provide a handy checklist of tasks complete. Here is the default checklist for what you get when starting a draft. There's a couple things that aren't technically required, but you should consider them necessary anyways. If you think about it, this is a complete list of everything you need with to do before release. When starting out, I believe that there's a few fields that you should fill out immediately. You already know your license and your environments and your tags, and you can get your, guess your links fairly easily. It's trivially, trivial to change these later on, so I'd get them out of the way now. I am prohibiting you from writing the description or uploading any visuals. You have an idea for your mod now, and that's excellent. That's, that's great. I encourage you to continuously jot down notes elsewhere. The description is actually fairly difficult to edit later on, because you haven't made the mod yet. Your plans may change, and if they don't, you lack the specifics that evolve naturally from implementation details. You don't know the flow of your mod and how to order concepts logically. You will learn all of these during development, so leave the description empty for now. So, next, let's talk about how to, how to develop a mod, or, more accurately, what you can do besides technical work during development. Showcases. Everyone loves showcases. If you think your mod is cool, which it is, by the way, then show it off. A showcase is just media that demonstrates your project in some way, specifically posted to a public gallery. There are three media formats that work best for showcases. Screenshots are great. They're simple, reusable, and can be very thoughtful. If you can, go the extra mile and consider using shaders for extra aesthetic points. Did I mention I'm grading you on this? Anyways, the graphics interchange format is a step up. It trades quality for motion. Use them when there's some level of action involved. But it's still small and simple. Next, over here, are videos. Combining motion with sound, and at good quality. Record videos for more involved and complex showcases. I'll note that on Discord, people much prefer embedded video uploads to YouTube or streamable for links for whatever reason. When you post a showcase, it's best to add a short description, possibly including the mod name or mentioning that's an upcoming project. You should post at least one showcase before releasing the mod. People don't remember every showcase they see, but if they like one in the moment, they'll keep the project on their radar. Just last night, I was browsing QuiltCord and I found this really cool mod. I was like, shit, I gotta keep track of this. I suggest posting showcases in various Discord servers. For your mod loader, for example, general modding spaces, and your own server as well. We'll elaborate on other social media sites later. Here's a showcase from the Fabric Discord server. Arya has explained what she's done, what she's going to do, and has posted an image with multiple examples of the relevant feature. This is all done clearly and briefly. This is an excellent showcase and definitely captured people's attentions. Usually, showcases are very one-off. Well, 
pat boxes in your usual mod, or is he? Here, he's created an image out of holograms. This is a good showcase of reasons mentioned prior, but then... A poor, innocent soul decides to display pat box with holograms. Who then responds by rendering that entire fucking video with holograms. With a single swift stroke, Zylera is annihilated by the almighty Patbox, who is cemented as the unchallenged server-side god. Let's fast forward a bit, shall we? You developed your mod and are ready for release. You took as much time as needed, and you weren't rushed by any external factors. Probably. Answering the big question now, here's how you finish a Minecraft mod. You start with the mod icon. If players associate the project itself with the mod icon, then you've done an excellent job. Though, that's not how I define the criteria. The only criterion for a mod icon is making sense. On the left are some icons I've made. The first one is the printer, and includes the namesake block that I feature in the mod. And below it is time lock, a mod for I made for this ModFest event. I don't really keep a consistent style with my mod icons, but on the right are some that do. When I see a pixelated mod icon with a, with a border and a red background, I know it's a Magister Max mod. And if I see this style of mod icon from probably the most famous mods in Minecraft at the moment, Sodium Lithium, then I know it's from the same family. You probably know that these icons, the yellow and blue ones, are from the fa same family, even if you aren't familiar uh, with the mods themselves. Here are some uh, mod icons from Fuzz. This is uh, um, one of my favorite, actually, like, m playing Minecraft modding players. So, um, he keeps a consistent style twice, right? Which is pretty unique. Uh, he has two styles, one for his personal mods and one for Luna Pixel Studios. I can recognize either of them, and that's pretty f spectacular. This is an example of brand recognition, and I promise I'll justify that term later. After you're done with the mod icon, fill out your gallery. Galleries are absolutely necessary. Words aren't enough. People want to see what they're going to get when they install a mod. Feel free to reuse your previous showcases, and that's why I recommend shaders for screenshots. Make sure your first image is something you really want to display, as it shows up as a banner on the project page and in the new projects channel in the Modern Discord server. Here's a pretty comprehensive gallery. I could make a reasonable guess about what this mod does based on the images alone. It's simple and explanatory and great for visualization. It's time to write the description. This is my favorite part. Modrinth won't even let you submit your project without one, so let's go all the way, yeah? It is vital to keep your description simple. It's primarily directed at potential players. Keep the complex stuff on your wiki. Offload any unnecessary specifics there as well. In other words, keep it succinct. That one's pretty important. Assume the reader no one knows how to install your mod, right? No installation guide. Don't include one unless there's special instructions or your mod is wildly populated. Additionally, you don't want to put your entire gallery in the description. That's what the gallery tab is for. Here's an example description model that I use for most of my projects. How you format your description, if at all, is totally up to you. But here's some guidance for those who are interested. A header is fanfare for your description. It's something that users glance at, but don't need to read. It can provide useful information, for example, with badges. But it mostly just looks nice. Fuzz uses a consistent header style that matches their icons. Whereas I use Devon's badges in the Hazard Diamond header. So check them out, because they're probably the best ones available right now. A pitch is what interests potential players. Summarize your mod. It should be a few sentences at most. If readers are intrigued by your pitch, then they'll read further to see if the mod is right for them. 
If a pitch demonstrates that the mod isn't what the reader thought it was, then you've saved them some time. Here's a divider. A divider separates your pitch into uh, any, uh, any information. This is absolutely a personal preference, but I believe splitting the description into manageable chunks not only helps with organizing your thoughts, but is easier on the eyes. Additional info is the bulk of your description. It's also the hardest to get right. All of the following examples are excellent. If your mod is simple enough to where going into the deta details is an issue, then do so. This is the case with the Volpine mod. Just remember that simplicity and brevity are important. For my simpler mods, such as Ochigenio, which is featured on the server, I like to list out my additional features that aren't as imperative to the mod's existence. You can also do what Aurora's Decorations does and link the extremely detailed wiki for further reading. Good descriptions convey descriptive information simply. A closer is how you end the description, while specifically targeting those who have read through it fully. Medvod Jukar includes a section for supporting them, including donation links and server promotions. Don't ever feel bad about including a section like this. If the money helps you out, then more power to you. They also include a gallery of other projects that they've made, and I really like this. If people read the entire description, they probably like the mod, or at least the idea, and want to see more from the author. To the right is what I put in my descriptions. It's a bit short, isn't it? Closers can be anything, as long as you know who's reading them. If you want to spice up the description a little bit, then consider using emojis. Placing them in front of section titles looks nice, and also provides a visual aid for those who need it. If you want to make it even easier to read, then consider using spoilers to condense sections, especially if they're quite long. Okay, now if you upload the CurseForge and haven't heard of this before, I'm going to save your life real quick. Upload your markdown description to GitHub, okay? Then copy the rendered version. Then paste it into the CurseForge editor as is, and then it shows up exactly the same. Boom. Isn't that cool? Okay, so if none of the previous tips help at all, just write something, please. I promise it's worth it. Yes, yes, Amy, for real. It Try it. it. It works. It's so disgusting. I love it. So, a quick tip about the, mod, uh, about the um, uploading files to CurseForge. The convention for the same major version is to separate into release, beta, and alpha, so they show up on the main page. But most players aren't still downloading manually, right? And they're using launchers like Prism or the CurseForge app instead. And they generally avoid alpha versions. Although the left setup looks nicer on the website, prefer the right one. Finally, I will explain how to release a Minecraft mod. Here is what no one has told you. It is necessary to announce your release. All the prior work you've done has led up to this point. Consider this your final project, and remember, it's always graded. Announce the release to all the Discord servers you did previously. Make sure to include apl applicable links, being ModRynth, your code source location, for example, GitHub or GitLab, and the CurseForge link if you've uploaded it there. It's fairly important to post to other media sites as well. Posting to Reddit on r slash feed the beast, or if it's a joke mod, right, then r slash feed the memes, is extremely rewarding. Most of the content there is from modded players, so posts from modders are likely to make it to the front page. Additionally, post to Twitter, especially if you have a, if you have a dec decent following. Mention at ModRynth and uh, QuiltMC, and they might also retweet you. As a final step for the release, set up uh, a GitHub or like a GitLab or any other code source bridge to your Discord. With GitHub, it's fairly easy to do, and there's many tutorials online. With a bridge like this, it's extremely easy to catch any issues or pull requests and pe that people may create. And it just helps you stay on top of things. <sighs> so, here are a few parting tips about the release. Modding is fun, okay? 
at least for me. And releasing a mod can be too. But you have to take a break, even for a day. Take it all in. Talk to your friends. Answer questions. Just chill. It is necessary. Try to not get burned out. Yes, go and touch grass. Go outside. On the flip side, you've got to tune all that shit out. Any people asking for backports, version updates, loader ports, don't even respond. And if you do, just say no. You're going to get a lot of these comments, and if you don't want to port, then you're not ready to do it. You also don't need to fix or respond to issues immediately. I emphasize the importance of a source to Discord bridge. That's to help you keep track of things. Don't like wake up out of bed, look at your phone, then rush to get a hotfix out, right? It's just not worth it. And trust me, I know from experience. What I've gone over today has many parallels to other aspects of life. Basically, I've just gaslighted you all into listening to a talk about marketing. It is true that marketing can be used maliciously. It is also true that the majority of marketing applications today are very corporate. But there's a difference. Minecraft mods are passion projects, labors of love. They're genuine. They're not products. Even if you only mod for yourself or your friends, people playing with your mod is important. User feedback helps you improve your project and love it even more. And that's why I play modding Minecraft. That's what no one tells you about releasing a Minecraft mod. It's really fucking fun. Thanks, everyone. You're a great audience. I, I, I said probably, because I didn't know beforehand, but uh, yeah, you were. Is there a... How do we do the fireworks? How do we have questions? I don't know any of this shit. I want to answer your questions, but I don't know how. Uh, there's... I'm pretty sure there's a feature where people can throw down books into that area, and yeah. it somehow ends up on, like, your little device you're holding. Where's the tablet, yeah, bro? It'll, it'll show you on the tablet. Okay, 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 oh, tablet, 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 tablet. Awesome. That's the, the green button. Green button. What's, what's the green button? That, uh... How do I interact with this? Face. That shows smiley it. Smiley face. Yeah, smiley face. Oh, awesome. Uh... Okay. You got it. Did I do it? Awesome. I can't see what it says. I show the Thank you for taking your time to talk to us. You're welcome. Do I have a list of good servers to post this to? Uh, I usually just post my mods to Fabric and Quilt, because I'm a Fabric modder. Um, I'm also in the Owl of Fabric Discord. I know that they uh, accept like showcases and stuff and mod releases, but I've I've talked to people like Maddie Dragon before, and they have good lists of like tens or dozens of modded Minecraft servers that you can talk to. Are these slides a to-do list that you need to do for your mod? Yes, I, I'm grading you on this. If you don't follow one step, then automatic fail. But in all seriousness, um, I think this is more of a guideline than uh, just, just guidelines, right? It's more of a guideline than an actual comprehensive checklist. I think the Modrinth draft is probably something that's actually required to do because it's just so helpful. But if you didn't take anything away from my description and tips and stuff, that's totally fine. Remember, just write something. Is there any good automation system to post up updates and releases to multiple platforms? It is quite, uh, I'm going to guess you're saying like it's, it's too hard or it's like too tedious. Um, I, okay, this is going to surprise you, but no, honestly, no. Setting up GitHub stuff and like GitHub, uh, like deployments for each thing and uh, doing Minotaur stuff. My personal preference is to not do any of that stuff. I just upload completely manually. It is definitely a personal preference because I know other people's workflows, like they have it and it works well. But for me, I just upload manually because that's the easiest thing to do. Does this work for mod packs too? Yeah, actually, I wanted to 
um, I wanted to talk about that. Most of this can be applied to any project that you're working on. That's why I talked about parallels to the real world. So if you, if you make a, a passion project, a labor of love, then do the exact same thing. Do like roughly the same thing that I, I'm talking about here. This is what I, I would do. Like especially on Modrinth, um, shader packs, resource packs, data packs. This applies so much, right? Because they're on the same site. It's basically the same thing. It's just got kind of a different spin on it because I was talking about code and my mod specifically. How many servers do I post stuff to? Um, I would say three, just Fabric, Quilt, and my own server. Um, it's, it's not actually that many, but I, I, I encourage you to find and seek out new servers to post stuff to. I just haven't done it yet. I, uh, I, I missed the question. Shit. Can you put it again? Regarding the gallery mod icon, uh, okay, yeah, I wanted to talk about visuals as well. So there's a couple things that don't have visuals. I was talking about like the majority of Minecraft mods here that have had some sort of content to the game, or they can be showed off in some way. So stuff like time lock, the description doesn't really apply there. I made an icon for it because I like graphic design and I like I like icons. Um, but you don't have to put any really real effort into it if you don't want to. As long as you, as long as like quad is like, it's right there. You need an icon. As long as you have one, it's fine. For gallery, you don't need to do that actually though. I, I would say mod icon is like the only important visual if you for uh, more functional mods. And a description can just be like how to use a utility if you're making utility mod. That's true, quad. I actually really like your mod icons. I it's also brand recognition. I can tell that from you. Can you recommend Minotaur? Uh, sadly, I cannot. So when I first used Minotaur, um, it just didn't work. Like it would always get a validation error or something. It always get a. It also always get like a null pointer exception in in while I was doing it, even though I had the like the um, my correct token and all that. So I actually haven't used Minotaur at all. And like I said, I upload stuff manually, so I'm not really the best person to ask on this. This better be recorded. Is someone recording this? Sometimes someone's recording this. Okay. Awesome, thank you. I want to show this to my friends as well. How's your dev environment testing world like? Um, I name all my testing worlds Joe or Guy or some variation of that. Um, and I just mess around. Uh, I do test all my features before, like, not really all my features, but I do test stuff before I uh, go live with it, especially on server. I test on server, like dedicated server, before I uh, um, upload anything. Yeah, A is good too. Also, I, I, I also like leaving it as new world. Executive dysfunction. Uh, why can't I? Bruh. Oh, okay, here. Um... Can you uh, describe to me what executive dysfunction is? I've heard it before, but I uh, forgot what it is. And you can just um, shadow with the mic as well if you want to. Difficulty executive doing shit. Executive dysfunction is like you know exactly what you want to do. You know exactly what you need to do, but you you're like hey body let's go do this thing and then it's the equivalent of like turning a key in the car and nothing's and nothing happens friends just like nah we're just gonna do like literally anything else yeah it's it's any problem that uh affects your how you direct your own actions okay uh I, that sounds like me unfortunately i have no solution to this um <laughs> i mean i kind of do just it's okay like don't be hard on yourself for it. If you like doing it, and if you only do it when you want to do it, that's ideal. Um, even if you want to do it and you can't do it, uh, and you, you do it when you can, right? And you do what you can and you want. Hopefully that answers your question, but I'm, I'm not really that good with that stuff. As long as you're developing and having fun with development, then it's good to go. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a bad teacher, also I'll give you a hundred. As long as you give me like a cookie or something. 
That was pretty good. Thanks. What the... Oh, cookie, yay. That's awesome. What, uh... I think that's it. Or... Didn't I throw in one? Yeah, hold on. I, I threw in one, but it got... <sighs> I'm... I'm not at this. Uh... Okay, I want to put this on the screen, but it's not letting me. Okay, did I put it on the screen? Yeah, you did. No, that's not the wrong. It's not the right one. Okay, what's a good tip to make mods stand out from the other similar ones? Um, usually your mod name, um, and I didn't really talk about this because I think your mod name is is like generally not really important. I mean, okay, all my mod names are variations of two words, and I'm, so, I'm very I'm not proud of them at all, so I don't think I'm good enough to talk about that. But I think um, I think the, the most eternal constant in Minecraft modding is that your mod stuff, your ideas, are not unique. Like, everything has been done before, is my mantra, all the time. So I don't think it's actually an issue. I think if you need to stand out, uh, then you're, you're like, looking at it the wrong way. So someone asked, um, oh yeah, I do like yet another. I like yet another Kong Fig Lib. Someone asked about, like, someone t told me a comment more that playing modding Minecraft was more fun than playing like modded Minecraft, and I absolutely agree. I don't even play modded Mi I don't even play Minecraft. I don't even play games most of the time. Like, I don't even play with my own mods if I if I do play Minecraft. It's uh, developing is absolutely more fun to me. Oh, that, that was like the wrong. What would you recommend to aspiring mod developers who don't know about the first thing in programming? Um, learn Java. Like, Java is, okay, hmm, how about, it's, it's so hard for me to talk about like learning programming languages because I learned at such an early age that it just comes by second nature to me. I would learn on yeah, W3 Schools, Code Academy are both great for beginners, I would say. Um, I think W3 Schools is, is for tips and stuff. But Minecraft modding, there's something about it so that it's so esoteric, right? There's so much domain-specific knowledge that you need to understand, and that can only come from experience. That can't come from, like, reading stuff. You just have to learn and look, about, look at, at it, okay? So have some, like, okay Java knowledge, just, like, stuff like that before you go into it. But um, apart from that, you need to learn on your own and stuff. It's it's just a very it's a it's a learning experience, I would say. It's a, <laughs> dude. Someone told me this. I can't remember who, but it's like so it's so helpful. I I have a PDF, Amy, so I can send that to you. It's actually in the events chat, so you can just go download it right now. And I have my script. Do I hate features beyond behind a paywall? Um, mm, uh, it depends on what you mean by paywall. So I think there was um, like Patreons. Uh, what was that? The sorry, but the chairs and benches are gone. Oh uh, yeah, don't mention it. Um, um, okay, so. I haven't really formed an opinion on this. I think donations are, like, amazing, right? Like, you should absolutely um, put your donations somewhere. Like, I haven't actually set up a donation page yet. I think I should sometime. If you want to, like, immediately, go for it. Like, if you have downloads, you have a community, and you've worked on hard, you've worked hard on something, people are going to want to support you. Um, so, paywalls, as in, like, donating and you get stuff in-game, I don't really have an opinion on it. I think it's worse when servers do it than when modders do it, I would say. Rule of thumb when writing wikis. So when I say descriptions are as like simple as possible, wikis should be logical but extremely detailed, okay? Um, order your th ordering your thoughts in a in a logical order in a in a flowing 
way is more important than the details themselves, I would say. So just take notes first, okay? Write down your main points as if you were like writing an essay, right? That's my first tip. Asset cord when, I actually do have one. I can, I'm not gonna invite you to it because it's, it has, okay, that was mean. I don't, I, I don't actually know who, who submitted that. Who's that? Anonymous. Yeah, I can't, I can't invite Anonymous, right? So, tomatoes or potatoes? Um, I hate tomatoes. I love potatoes. Um, so, you're, I'm guessing you're going to say that you still don't have many... Uh, uh, you, don't, you still don't have many um, people in your Discord. Uh, I have yeah I have quite a few downloads as well, but um, not many people in my Discord. I don't think the engage like activity is like that important to keep up as long as it provides an organized space for you and for people who like want to talk to you about your mod can go to as rare as that could be, then you're set. Yeah, like James can attest to that. It's like it's rare. It's fine though. Uh, okay, so should you should you be play testing? Wait. Um, you can do that if you want. Like, I I know it's kind of like used more in a joking way, but if you want to do the review style of stuff, um, I think that's pretty cool. As long as you like aren't um overly generous with yourself and pick and choose and stuff, I think it's more better for like um, it's like. If someone if someone, someone is like says like a uh, Banui year for example when responding to your nod, that's what you should include rather than reviews. Same icon for all of your mods. I don't actually I'm not actually aware of this. Um, I think it's more. I think this would be bad. Like there's some sort of thing as too much consistency. If you don't have anything to separate projects with, um, or like if they're if they're all the same project more or less, then it's fine. But if you are using all your mod icons uh, as like one thing, then that's kind of an issue. Because um, you need people to differentiate stuff when they're talking about your mods. How do I stay motivated? Um, I'm addicted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, email that to me. I'll, I'll, I will tell you about your mod if you email it to me. I like that. Um, I know your location. Additional developers. Um, there's a couple channels in Fabricord and Quiltcord for requests and stuff. They aren't super active and people don't really respond to them. But there's also a channel in this Discord for Modfest called uh, I think it's called Classifieds. If you need support, like with some, if you need like someone to help you with stuff, like art for example or developers, then just post there because we're a super friendly community and we'll we'll help you out. There's also a support channel, general support channel. Uh, so the only showcase videos I've done are like super fast paced or super short because I have recorded with NVIDIA forever and it, it like if you record for 30 seconds it'll give you like a gigabyte of data so it's hard because Discord has an upload limit right um, uh, so if you don't have Nitro videos are kind of difficult I think OBS is way better with like uh, the thing is about YouTube is that in my experience, people just don't click on YouTube links. I don't even know what it is. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't really know why. If if you post embedded videos with sounds, it's just like so much more engagement. I have no idea why. Yeah. Okay. People know more about me when it comes to video file size. So listen to them. What if your mods suck? Uh, that's not true. Um, as long as you can find them, e like, if, so, if you have a setup that works for you easily for finding stuff, like, issues and stuff, like, and being notified about them, that is, like, totally okay. 
I'm totally okay with the, the tomato famine. Like, um, is that say potato or tomato? Yeah, tomato famine. I I hate tomatoes. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for all the questions. Really enjoyed that. We haven't given too much power. Shut up, buckle. Fireworks! Woo! Ah, oh, my game. I'm bowing. <laughs>